cannot believe this is the second time that I am filming this video. The first time I had no sound. <laughs> just like, that hasn't happened to me in a while, but yikes, that one hurts. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the new Charlotte Tilbury Matte Eyes to Mesmerize collection. There are five colors in this collection and I picked up all five of them. You can see right here that all five of them are here in front of me. Now, since this is the second time I have done this video, I have to let you guys know right off the hop, these are certainly not my favorite products. <laughs> so going to have to play with them again because I really do want to demonstrate for you guys really the type of texture this is and why it's not my favorite product. I actually think this is probably one of the most disappointing launches from Charlotte Tilbury and you guys know that I love her. I love Charlotte. If I could pick one makeup brand that's been consistent for me, I would say it was her brand. So let's get started here just kind of clipping my bangs back as usual. What I did with my trial was I actually did primer for one of them and then an unprimed eye for the other one. Now I... I think I will do that again, just so you guys can really see the difference, but it's not my favorite to have primed eyes for this. I'm gonna show you guys on one eye here. I'm actually just gonna use my Smashbox for this eye, just to kind of prime it, and then I'll use the other lid for an unprimed eye. Now, with my first trial of these, the unprimed eye, because this is such a stiff formula, it's incredibly clay-like in nature. Like it's very, very drying and very like texture enhancing and just makes your lids look really bad in my opinion. So having a primed eye, I mean, this is a matte finish primer. It is kind of like a whipped lotion in consistency from Smashbox, but it does dry down to a matte. I actually firmly believe if you are someone that wants to try out these products, having a little bit of oil on your lids will help with some slip and it'll actually help you apply them better. <laughs> so the prime dye you will see is going to make things a little bit tougher. The cream eyes to mesmerize come in a number of different colors and you do have to make sure that the lids are really tight. They don't have too long of a shelf life as well, typically six months. Although I feel like mine extend a little bit past that. I only start to notice something at the year mark when things are maybe a little bit harder to blend and then I know that the formula has changed. So just so you guys know, these don't have the longest shelf life and the matte ones have the exact same shelf life at six months. The cream eyeshadows come in a lot of different shades and they do offer a shimmer, which is is why she decided to make this matte line. Now this matte line is five shades. So we do have Nude Cashmere, which is the lightest shade. It's nearly the color of my skin tone. The next one up, which is Flawless Beige. Flawless Beige does have a purpley label, almost like a mauve, but when you actually see the pot, it's still kind of darker than I thought. So I'm like, eh, I sort of wish you were a little bit more purpley than brown, but it is a beige color, so it makes sense from that perspective, but the label kind of made me excited to think it was gonna be a purple, but no. <laughs> now we do have some darker ones in this collection. Smoky Taupe, I can see a lot of people being attracted to. This one is a true taupe color, a little bit on the darker side, and hence the name, but this is a lovely one. This is the, I guess, middle shade when it comes to lightest to deepest. We also have two deep shades. One is called Chocolate Veil, this is a beautiful, beautiful color. Very like milk chocolatey. Reminds me of a mousse dessert, but the texture throws you off, so it's not, but <laughs> this is definitely a really beautiful brown, and I so wish there was more slip to this because I think that this would have made people really, really happy. We also have the Diffuse Black, which is the last shade in this collection. Now, Charlotte does say you can use these as primer for you know, underneath an eyeshadow look, you can use them by themselves. You can also use them as eyeliner. Maybe eyeliner might be the best use for these if you have that skill level to pick up a really dry, stiff, clay-like formula with a brush and work very quickly. This is the problem with this. So these do run the same price as the cream eyeshadows at 34 US dollars each or 39 Canadian dollars a pop. I'm going to go in with the Sonia G Builder Pro and picking up as much as I can. Now, this in pot, when I did this look initially, I actually filmed this initially yesterday when it first came in. And because we're literally in the dead of winter, I was like, oh, well maybe it's because this formula is cold. Like it's been on a delivery truck 
and maybe it's cold and that's why it's really stiff and that's why it's not blending and that's why it's kind of a mess to work with, right? Like it just needs to thaw. It's now the next day. <laughs> I have heat in my home. There is no way this is still cold. The jars don't feel cold. And even when I was doing my initial first impression, the pots didn't feel cold then either. So, I mean, you can make do with that information how you will, but this is, in my opinion, performing the exact same way that it did the first time that I use them. This color, because it's so similar to my skin, it's not going to show you the deficiencies of this formula. This is a rule of thumb overall. Whether you have a powder eyeshadow, a cream, you know, shimmer, matte, finish, whatever, anything as close to your skin like that, it's going to look pretty dang good because you can't distinctly see any difference, right? There's no pop of color yet. I can see on my lids already, it's gathering into my lines, it sets almost immediately. Like it is something you have, like she does say on the website, place and work really fast. I mean, are we talking about being the flash here? <laughs> like I don't have that type of superpower. <laughs> in fact, it's probably already set in the pot. Like it's already a set formula. So applying it, you're applying a set dried cream on your eyes. If you can picture that, this is exactly how it feels. And it feels like, I mean, it makes your lids up close look quite dry quite wrinkled. I mean, stark lines for sure, because blending out the edges is going to be near impossible. So when you're thinking about what look you want to achieve, if you want to achieve a look that has a stark line, you'll be able to achieve that with this. If you want like a little bit of an airbrushed edge, good luck. <laughs> good luck. So now I'm going to apply the nude cashmere on the primed lid. So even the unprimed lid, in my opinion, was a task. This one is the primed lid. So using the same brush and it's pulling even more, giving me much more resistance and rightfully so. If you want to use a primer for this, maybe just a moisturizer, but nothing with a matte finish, it's going to work against this for sure. So I kind of had that hypothesis when I was working with this and then I realized right away how much of a struggle it was just from an unprimed lid and now with a primed lid, it's even worse. They don't feel tacky at all. They do feel like a powder matte, but because of how drying it is, guys, I don't know. I mean, I would personally never leave a look just like this. I wouldn't feel very confident. I would feel like my eyes look worse than they are. And for the purpose of a one and done kind of product, like how Charlotte was supposed to probably intend these for, um, I think it would take you a long time to make it look nice. Like that's kind of the whole purpose of these cream shadows, whether matte or shimmer. In my opinion, you want them to just like bloop with your fingertip. And trust me, I tried putting my fingertip in these. My nails are too long right now. <laughs> so I ruined my nails. I'll show you a picture from yesterday trying to do these swatches. Like the clay formulation got underneath my nails and it was so hard to remove. We'll talk about how hard it's to remove as well. This one isn't like as high up in the tub. You can see it's sort of like past even the lip here where I feel like sometimes the cream shadows give you a little bit more of that extra product inside the top lip so you can sort of get in there a little bit even if you have nails with your hands but even with a finger application I'm going to make the sacrifice again guys I'm going to go in here with a finger I'm going to use my pinky because I can get in there <laughs> as easily as possible it doesn't make it I mean you can move a little faster but it sets quickly just with a pinky now normally how I work with the original cream Eyes to Mesmerize, which is the shimmer, I actually just apply it with a fingertip. But the first thing I have found is that the product, it does weigh a little bit less apparently. Nude Cashmere comes in at 0.17 ounces, whereas Oyster Pearl comes in at 0.23 fluid ounces. They do have the exact same container, that frosted glass base. That's kind of a question mark. I hope that it just weighs less because it is the same price as the originals. You guys, I don't know. Like this is such a disappointment. I'm, I mean, you can tell by just like how I feel about this and how kind of torn I am because I really do love Charlotte and her brand. And I don't like saying bad stuff about makeup, but this is such a struggle of an experience. I think it's going to be for a very particular makeup user that probably is an expert level when it comes to applying. The camera is going to make my lids not look that bad, right? We also have the lightest shade on. So I'm actually going to take a picture with my iPhone <laughs> so you guys can see. And I'm going to show you guys when I edit this video, I'm going to show you the pictures because yikes. 
<laughs> now, also according to Charlotte Tilbury, she says that you can apply this with the eye blender brush, which I have. If her own brush won't do it for us, <laughs> let's see. I'm going in with the next darkest shade. This is the Flawless Beige shade. The unprimed eye first, let's try that. Oh my gosh, like nothing even came on the brush. Even though she's saying to pick it up with the eye blender, this isn't the densest brush per se, so it's having a hard time picking up the pigment. And like I said, I feel like what I'm doing is I'm rubbing clay on my eyes because you can't really do this blending application motion that we're typically used to seeing. What it's actually doing is crumbling on itself as well. At least this is a little better with being a little bit more like diffused of a look, so that I do appreciate. This is slowly giving me what I'm looking for, but I'm gonna show you another picture with this shade now of how it's looking, even on an unprimed eye. So all of the texture is emphasized. And just so you guys know, because now that I have experience with this, removing these, <laughs> removing these is also so hard. <laughs> These actually have staining capabilities, so with just a traditional makeup wipe, they're not going to come off. If you do use a remover of some kind, I actually find either an oil-based is best, or remover I have is the Neutrogena Oil Free. This one is drugstore actually, and it's phenomenal. And this one takes it off. There's so many things that make this experience way harder than it needs to be. I don't really want to put any more on. I mean, I'll try. I'll put on maybe the Smoky Taupe because I know that's one that's going to probably appease a lot of people. I'm going to try using, this is the Refer 26, and I'm going to pick up the Taupe. It's literally like putty. That's the only way to describe it. Clay, putty, certainly not smooth. Definitely not. Like, I feel like I'm putting mud on my lid. It's just so dry, and actually parts of it are clumping off and falling onto my face. You are adding depth, yes, but it looks horrible. I'm gonna go in with the rescue team here, and we're gonna use Oyster Pearl from the Cream Original Shimmer Eyes to Mesmerize line. I'm actually gonna use the Sonia G. This one is the Jumbo Blender going in there. Don't need a ton, but this is very metallic. It's definitely a taupe color, so this is gonna cover everything. This is exactly what we need right now. <laughs> this is gonna single-handedly save this look. Now, I use my fingers with this. I use brushes with this. It gives you way more time to buff in and to blur out. These are absolutely phenomenal. Now, they are going to look worse because we have all of this matte formulation underneath. It's not going to make it look better. It's going to make this look the best it can. <laughs> so that if you want to get out of your house at all or like face the world, you can feel a little bit more confident knowing that at least the eyeshadow is uniform, makes your easy to blend out. Keeping my lid relaxed here because this is important, especially if you have hooded lids. Whatever moisture this cream is providing is actually getting probably sucked up. So <laughs> now that the rest of the look is put together, let's talk about the final thoughts on this interesting line from Charlotte Tilbury. Now, as you guys know, I think I made my points pretty clear with just like how the formulation felt, how it applied. It really wasn't very easy to make it look how I would like it to look. It is such a clay-like stiff formula to work with. Now let's show you guys the swatches here, which is the entire collection. All of the shades from Nude Cashmere, Flawless Beige, Smoky Taupe, Chocolate Veil, those are the ones that have one layer. So you can actually see how they look. They actually look a little bit dehydrated in the swatch here too. The reason why the black is so opaque is actually because I jammed my nail so far into that that I had probably the equivalent of five to 10 layers of product on that swatch. So perhaps the black has a different kind of quality because that one does seem to have a little bit of a richer pigment. I will try and see if I could just use that as a liner, like something to salvage this collection at all would be very, very helpful. So I'm just so overwhelmed with how disappointed I am and I just so wish that these worked out better. If you are still interested in checking these out, they are available at Charlotte Tilbury's website right now. And looking at the promotions for the website, it's actually really devastating because these looks that she has created with these matte shadows, they actually look really stunning on the models. <laughs> so I'm like, how did you do that? Is it because you are a makeup artist for the celebrities and I just don't have the talent? Like, look at this beautiful look. 
it looks so diffused and so like smoky and lovely. Like I cannot get that to that look. Is it just my eyelids? Do hooded eyes make a big difference? Apparently these are only gonna be available on Charlotte Tilbury's website. It says only available there according to her site. And what makes it magic is the pure pigments. I mean, yeah, they're pigmented, sort of. <laughs> Apparently there is smoothing formulations rich with emollients. I mean, I just don't feel that. I don't feel that within this formula at all. There's a soft glow glide effect that doesn't drag on the skin. No, certainly not. That is not my experience. It even says aloe vera comforts the delicate eye area. I felt like it was a war against my skin and it's just not something that I want to continue to have to do because that is delicate eye area skin, right? Lasts up to 12 hours, no doubt about that because it stains. <laughs> So enhances the look of your eyes. Enhances in what way? Not positively in my opinion. So really hope you guys have better luck with them if you decide to purchase them. And if you do have tips, please let me know down below. I would love to make this collection work much better for me. Until my next one, guys, I really hope this was helpful. Take care and stay safe. Bye guys.